And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hi, welcome to the Dice Tower. Today we're going to review Ascension. Rise of Vigil. This is not the uh, first Ascension game. This is an expansion to the game, but it's also a standalone game. You can play it by itself. It comes with everything. So if you've never played Ascension before, this is a great introduction to the game. Uh, but I'm not going to explain how to play Ascension here. We're just going to talk about this and the new things it adds to the game. Everything is included here to play a full game of Ascension. In fact, if this was the very first Ascension game that you bought, uh, I don't think that you would even notice that this was an expansion. If you add it to the Ascension cards that are already in the game, the deck is probably this high or so at this point in time. But you can see there's still Mystics, Heavy Infantry, Cultists, and there's cards. There's one new thing that's added to this game. Each person is going to get an energy shard in their starting deck. So you will have 11 cards rather than 10. When you draw an energy shard, you get to draw another card and you get an energy. So basically it gives you an energy and then you, you get rid of it. It gives you another card. Um, but there's more ways to get energy shards in this game. As energy shards are drawn from the deck, when it comes time to fill the row, you place those in the next open spot. And if there's multiple energy shards, you'll keep placing them there until you put something there. When someone buys that item or defeats that monster, you will get all those energy, energy shards into your deck. Now let's take a look at the cards from the deck. I'm not going to show you every card from the game, just a selection of the cards that are in this game. There are several cards that don't have anything to do with energy. Basically, I'd call them normal, like the Lagoon Troll or the Reality Sculptor, which lets you copy someone three or less, or the Temporal Eye, which if you have two of them, you can banish them to take another turn. Uh, the Skyrocket Drone is a really cheap one that I like. He gives you one and an extra one if you control a construct. Since I always try to control the constructs, this basically gives me two for a cost of one. And then this monster here, five, and everyone else destroys all their contracts. That's the, the sea slug. But we're here to talk about the energy shards and what they add to this deck. So let's take at things that uh, have something to do with these treasures. Now this is the first treasure I would assume as time goes by that future sets will introduce other treasures. So here you can pay two less to take a card that has a treasure underneath it. Or this guy, you can banish a card if the next card is a treasure, you get it immediately. And the treasure hunter here gets two strength, but he pays one less the next time he defeats a monster with a treasure underneath him. Uh, here we have the Leighton's Familiar. And if you notice, they have a regular ability on them, gain one, but you can also energize them, use energy that you've gained this turn to do something. So I can energize him for one to get two points. This guy here gives me two, but I can energize him for three to give me two fighting. Uh, here I can reveal the top card in my hand. If, I, if it's a treasure, I get three points. Here, this gives me one energy, but if it, the fate, and a lot of cards like this, and as usual, these fates are really hard to read. But this one says, when it enters the center row, for each treasure under it, each player may banish a card in their hand or discard pile. As far as I can tell, all the fate abilities of this expansion, and if you've never played with fate before, let's say you've only got regular ascension, fate, when it comes into play, it's like an effect that affects everybody at once. Uh, here you get one for each faction among the constructs you control. Energy. Here you can energize three and defeat any monster without paying its cost. That's a really big deal. Here you can get an extra two fighting. Here this prince lets you copy the effect. You, with, uh, I, this is a really one of my favorite cards in the deck, by the way. You can copy a hero that's been played this turn. And then you can energize for two to copy them again. Whoa. So if you have a really cool hero in your hand, you can play it three times in a row. Definitely have seen that happen. Here, this one gives you four points, but you get an extra point for each energy you gain this turn. That's a lot of points that you're going to get as time goes by. And then there's constructs that are in this game. This one here gives you energy every turn. This one here, you can spend four energy to get three points. This one here, you can spend four energy to get 
money for every construct you control. And of course, the mechanic constructs still chain together and do different special abilities uh, with the different energy that you have gotten. And then there's monsters that also energize. When you kill them, you get a victory point, but then you can energize for two to take two money. Or here, you can banish this monster as a trophy monster. Uh, for those of you who have not used trophy monsters before, when you capture a trophy monster, you put it in front of you, and you can use it later on for its trophy effect. Um, and here you can energize one to banish an extra card. So there's lots of different monsters, but let's take a look. The Twisted Tyrant. Six points, and if you energize it for three, you draw three more cards. But not as nasty as this guy. Five, and everyone discards a random card, and you could take one of those cards in your hand. But still, the Herald of Doom! You can get six points for this guy, but if you happen to have seven energy, and if you can pull that off, you acquire and defeat every card in the center row. If you can pull that off, it's one of the most awesome effects in the entire game. That is so neat. Then we have also some great heroes. This guy gives you three. But an interesting one about this one is when this card enters play, for each treasure underneath it, add ten points to the pool. If there's three or four treasures, this Loom Speaker Druid can really lengthen the game. It's just an interesting card. Um, this guy is very powerful. Every time you get a hero from the middle of the table, you will acquire points equal to their point value. So let's say I got the Loam Speaker Droid. I would Druid. I would get two points when I got him. Then there's the Demon Born here. Four, but you get an extra one for every energy. One of the most powerful fighters in the game. Omnicron, a great construct that gives you one energy for every other construct you control. The Reactor Shrine, which can give you one point for each construct you control. And then the Judge of Logos, a nine, one of the most high-priced people in the game. When he's in the center row, you can acquire it without paying its cost for seven energy. So you can just, you don't even have to pay for him. You can buy him for energy. But he just kills every monster. Kills all the monsters in the front row. Just runs around and kills everybody. So those are an example of some of the cards that this set includes. All right, let's recap before we jump into this expansion. What do you think about Ascension, the regular game? Not this expansion, but just Ascension. So people know where we are. I thought it was fun. The artwork was really bad. I didn't like the artwork at all. Okay, but you liked the game. Yes, it was fun. It was kind of like um, Dominion, except that you don't have that many choices to buy from, and they're different. Right, they're different every turn. <laughs> And um, we've played every expansion of Ascension so far. So this is the latest one in the expansions that we've, we've been playing. What do you think about this expansion specifically? I liked it because of all those energy shards that you could like energize the cards. Um, I didn't like that. Um, I thought I had a lot of cards with points, but then I noticed that more than ha um, maybe like... Half my deck was just energy shards. There is a ton of energy shards in this deck. Now that will be very interesting. We have only played this game as a standalone game. We have not yet mixed it with everything else. I'm curious to see when you spread these energy shards out throughout the whole deck, or even if you combine it with just one or two of the other sets, that will make the energy shards less useful and make these monsters less useful. The monsters who use energy in this set are super powerful because you're going to have energy. Um, for me, this is my favorite expansion. I really like the energy shards. I really think they add, it's a third currency basically. You now have the, the runes, the money, the attack power, and then you have energy. So it's a third thing. And the treasure card is cool because it might make you grab somebody in the middle that you wouldn't normally. I don't want that guy. He's only, he's a weakling, but he has four treasure cards underneath him. Oh, yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll kill him. Uh, you know, so I think that adds some to the game. Any other thoughts? Just that, be careful you don't get too many energy shards to clog up your entire deck. And but it doesn't clog up your deck because you, when you draw them, you can play them right away. There are just no points. Well, that's because you play differently than I do. I always like to go for the very expensive constructs that give you a lot of points, but they don't necessarily help you as you play the game. Uh, and, and you go for the coolest cards that you can see. Um, now, with the energy uh, expansion, and is, was there any card from the, the deck that you really liked a lot? Um, that one huge monster that used seven energy, 
I almost got it because I had six energy in my hand. <laughs> That's true. You killed it, which was a great monster to kill, but you really, if you had got the seven energy, you would have killed everything in the middle row. So close. Yes, that's, that's just a neat concept to me. My favorite card is the one that lets you triple the effect, basically, of another character. And that's a neat concept, too. So anyway, if you've never played Ascension, you could jump into this and do well just fine. If you play Ascension, this is a great expansion, and you certainly should try it out. Artwork still, though. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Shut the door! Shut the door! Boop. Boop.